Hello and welcome. Today we're making French toast. French toast is great because it's super easy and most everyone likes it as a nice treat here and there. There are a few things that can trip you up though and we'll talk about those while we're cooking our toasts. Is it toast or toasts as a plural? I don't know, but toast sounds kind of weird. So, for this recipe you're going to need... For each set of two toasts, we will need two slices of Texas toast, obviously, one egg, one quarter cup milk, one tablespoon sugar, one teaspoon vanilla extract or vanillin, and one half teaspoon cinnamon. You can just multiply this recipe for how many ever people you want to feed. It's generally about two toasts per person, so you can just basically times this recipe by how many ever people you're serving. So, let's talk about our bread for a moment. We use Texas toast due to its increased thickness, and as you can see here, it's almost twice as thick as well as a bit larger in height and width. This lets it soak up a bit of the egg mixture and still retain some of the structure of the bread. If you have to use normal bread thickness toasts, you'll not want to dunk it for more than one to two seconds. You're basically going to put it in one, flip, take it out, drop it in the pan. Otherwise, it'll just be instantaneously soggy. So, one thing I noticed during testing was the cinnamon really likes to clump, and you would end up getting the first toast, dunk would be a ton of cinnamon in the second, and sometimes the third, if it makes it to that, we get progressively less and less cinnamon. By mixing the vanilla, sugar, and cinnamon into a paste like this, the sugar will actually encapsulate the cinnamon particles and prevent them from clumping up like that. You just need to mix it like this and let it set for about two to five minutes or so. I suggest starting the burner to preheat your pan at medium while you're doing this, and that'll end up giving that about five minutes to warm up as well. Once your sugar mix is done setting, we just need to mix it with the eggs and the milk and we'll be ready to start our dunking. We're not just mixing at this step though, we're also going to be adding some air into the mixture as well. If you can get a bit of air whipped into the mix, this will actually both slow how quickly the mix soaks into the bread, but it also adds, makes the egg mixture itself lighter, giving a lighter final product, making a texture more between custard and a soft set scrambled egg than more of a rubbery scrambled egg. You'll know when it's good when it's lightened by color in about one to two shades. This typically takes about a minute to two minutes of beating to get there. As always, the kittens and I would like to thank everyone for watching and supporting the channel. And if you're not already a subscriber and want to see more videos like this, subscribe for more recipes and hopefully some other food related content soon. And if you want to help the channel grow, like, share, comment, you know, all the YouTube jazz that tells the algorithm to spread the video far and wild. Once our egg mixture is as mixed as mixed as we want it to mix, we are ready for the dunking. For Texas toast, I would suggest about two to three seconds per side, and for normal bread thickness, basically less than one. Just dunk it in and flip it. This will let the mix soak in a little bit, but not over an overwhelming amount, and will keep your French toast a bit lighter, and I like mine that way. The longer you soak, the heavier and denser it's going to be. So this it does become somewhat of a preference situation here. I like mine lighter, so I only soak about two seconds per side. Anything over four seconds, in my experience, tends to end up with a mushy middle. Stale bread and toast bread can help soak up a bit more, but I find that also loses some of the pillowy texture you get in the center if you don't use stale bread. Once dunked, transfer immediately to a wide preheated pan to medium heat. I cook them for 1 minute and 45 seconds on the first side, and then a minute and 45 on the second after that flip, and then 30 seconds on each side after that, for a total of 2 minutes and 15 seconds of cooking time per side. Serve these hot. The longer between making them and serving them, the more the center will tend to fall in a bit. This is actually normal. I tested quite a few times in temperatures, and this had the best mix between setting the egg mixture, which gives it some stability, and being slightly rubbery, which is what happens if you get it overcooked. You'll almost undoubtedly need to tune these times to fit your equipment. It will vary probably between plus or minus 10 to 15 seconds, depending on what kind of pots and pans you have and what kind of burners you have. For a picture-perfect French toast, without the middle sunk in at all, you had to dunk it and flip it with no real time to soak in, so just dunked immediately in and then flipped immediately out and then directly into the pan. Then two minutes per side, with an extra 30 seconds per side after the first time they flipped, so again, two minutes and 30 seconds at that time. And since it looks perfect, why don't I do that instead of what we did? Because it really only gets the egg mix on the outside, and you don't get that custardy soft layer right underneath in between the crispiness and the bread part. It instead just goes from egg to bread and kind of tastes like disappointment in my opinion. Once your toasts are dunked and flipped and cooked, we are good to go.
So with that, you've made some really nice French toast and super easy. It may take a try or two to dial in your cook times, but once you do, it becomes super easy go-to recipe that you can kind of make any morning, brighten the mood and make things a little nicer. Plus it looks and tastes like you worked your butt off when it's just barely harder than making scrambled eggs, honestly. So as always, I hope you have a great day and a great meal.